Good morning kids, and today we're checking out a brand new video from Dead Meat Hostel Part 3 from 2011. Now, like with the other ones, you know, I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds to decide on whether to join me in watching this or not, because, you know, it's hostile. So, let's uh, begin. Okay, the 10 seconds are up. If you decide to stay, let's begin. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. Hey, James, I'm James, James Agenese, and today we're looking at Hostel Part 3, released in 2011. Unlike Part 2, Hostel 3 doesn't follow any of the characters or even countries from the previous films. What? Instead, the elite hunting club now runs a hot spot in Las Vegas, where four oh. bros on a bachelor party wind up falling victim to them and their clientele. Although Hostel okay. Part 2 yeah, bombed at the sense. box office, work started on a third installment one year later in 2008. Eli Roth briefly Took toyed with a story years, that followed though. the Bubblegum Gang, but left the project early, claiming there was no such thing as a good Part 3. Come on, man. Really gonna treat Dream Warriors like that? Series executive and... producer Scott Spiegel took over, the man who helped Sam kind Raimi of. make Evil Dead. When Spiegel started, Part 3 oh, was a cool. detective story about hunting down the hunters. And The Hangover came out in 2009 and Sony issued a directive. Do that! Oh, Plus the Vegas is. setting and a focus on suspense rather than torture porn. Hostile Part 3 was released direct to video and looks like it. You know, honestly, that actually makes sense. I actually have it focus more on suspense instead of the torture aspect of it. Because, you know... I mean, suspense is a bit better instead of just straight up blood guts and you know, just killing. With a cheap digital appearance and some questionable acting and shots. What, what is this shot hell? movie and why hold on it for eight whole seconds? I'm not looking at anything. What the fuck? It subverts what? some expectations uh -huh. of a hostile movie, so much so that it ends up barely being a hostile movie. Except for the drawn out torture scenes, of course, yeah, which feel is. more like padding here than ever before. The first two films yeah, had okay. plenty that of issues, sense. but they challenged me and I can respect that. I don't get anything strong in particular from part three. At this point, it's just going through the motions. Will a cheaper budget mean what the <laughs> and we're gonna cut because you know what time it is and we're back budget mean less torture and fewer kills let's find out and get to them I would the movie say less begins quality up on kills. booty cheeks, so I guess it is still a hostile film in some ways after all. Travis is a dorky looking American who finds himself shacked up with some PDA loving roomies from the Eastern Bloc. Come on. Have a drink with us. He cautiously counters oh, their offer drink. of suitcase uh, no, Anka with his travel beer, and Victor repays the favor by letting him ogle Anka as much as he wants. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. <laughs> as soon as Vic starts talking about sex clubs, though, Anka passes out in the shower. Oh. In a nice reversal of expectations, Travis is revealed to be the human trafficker oh, here. I bet you thought shit. it was Victor, huh? Way to profile. I'm just... I'm just so ashamed. Travis works for the Elite Hunting Club's U.S. branch. Since this ain't Slovakia, it's Sin City. Okay, dude, what was with his wrist? Why did it look like it was cut recently? Like, hold on, oh, let's this go works back. for the Elite Hunting Club's... Look, he's clearly been cut on his wrist. Oh, well, no, that's... Actually, no, that is the wrist, yeah. No. What, what happened? U.S. branch, since this ain't Slovakia, we'll it's Sin up. City, motherfuckers! But don't worry, we'll still be following a hapless American. In this case, Scott. He's setting off for a bachelor party weekend with best man and worst guy, Carter. These two are a carbon copy of Todd <laughs> Carter, and Stewart from dick. Hostel 2. The tall, brash alpha friend and the shorter, more sensitive main character. Carter promises Scott's fiance Amy, that they're merely going to golf in Palm Springs. But over a Whip Whitaker, he reveals he's secretly booked a Wolfpack weekend in Vegas. The studio Wolfpack. mandated Las Vegas as a setting, but production could only afford to film there for four of its 20 days. Everything else was Damn. shot in, oh shit, Detroit, Michigan! Since hey. this was the brief era of the state's film incentive tax rebates. Cheap and easy, baby! That means when Scott <laughs> and Detroit Carter are checking into the easy. fictional Excelsior <laughs> Casino, in actuality, they're checking into the Greek Town Casino downtown. I mean, Greek Town's cool and all, but it's clearly no Vegas casino. Maybe that's why they spend so much time with the camera hiding up these girls' asses, Jesus. Yeah, the rest maybe. of the movie cheats by keeping the characters on sad looking streets and alleyways. Come on guys, I get having to cheat your location, but even Lep 3 made sure to sprinkle in a little shit on the actual strip. Oh yeah, Leprechaun's 3. Forgot about that. Oops. Hold on folks, be right back. 
And we're back. Other two groomsmen for a long night of playing cards fast. Big slick. Justin's a mostly nice guy mm. whose one. physical disability gets him rejected by some women and teased by his so-called friends. You're not only disabled, you're also gay. Not Alan Tudyk teasing him there is Michael, by far the uh, most hostile not Alan character, Tudyk. Okay. which I mean a real piece of shit. Asians are bad luck. They're luck killers. Sorry. Nickel slot oh, groupies dude. Kendra and Nikki can't help but fall for the gang's race. We like Ricky. We've always been into that sort of thing. The ladies suggest a cooler place to loiter way off the strip. Okay, hold on. Someone gets abducted by that guy's mouth. Shut him up. Boys have so little blood in their brains, they don't even wonder why the cabbie's giving them a free ride to Club Jigsaw. Before they get inside, Amy calls Scott to worry and whine. She's worried about him cheating on her, since he's done it before, but she should be worried Ooh. about him getting headbagged and waterboarded. Oh, and also cheating on her still, I guess. Because turns out this is an elaborate bachelor party arranged by Carter. How much did oh, he pay to rent this why it was freaking free. warehouse? And all these people are there just for Scott, too. They freaking chant his name like a bunch of dorks. That's cool. Scott's played by Brian Holisay, who's now most famous for his work on shows like Revenge and 911. He married into horror royalty, though, since his wife is Jennifer Love. What are you waiting for? Awesome. You know, Scott's surprisingly cool about his really awesome. theme surprise party, even following Kendra to the champagne room. His guilt over past indiscretions stops him from getting his dick wet, though. No worries. Unhappily married man Mikey is more than willing to take the room from him to use with Nikki and to fulfill his race car driver fantasies. Indy 500. <laughs> Scott's puking outside and passing out when he's approached by the cabbie, or cabbies, from his drunk POV. But don't worry, he wakes up Too safe and sound them. in his hotel room. I guess that guy just gave him a ride home. Oh, that's Ooh, nice. Hopefully. Though Scott got off him free, that's not the case for Mikey, who wakes up in a human kennel. He's been taken out into that, the that desert is. to the hunting facility, which was played by the Detroit Masonic Temple, the largest of its denomination in the world. Opened in 1926, Damn. the building is so vast that it was used as a soundstage simultaneously by Hostel 3, the horror comedy Vamps, and Sorrentino's This Must Be The Place. Okay, Chelsea's that been there for badass. dance recitals, and director Scott Spiegel was familiar as well. He and buddy Bruce Campbell had their 1976 high school graduation there. Mikey's oh, cage is across even from more Victor. Awesome. Hey, Victor, remember that guy? There was one more scene with him and Anka, clumsily placed mid-opening credits, but they haven't been seen in the past 20 minutes. He's here now, though, and he watches as Mikey's dragged out of his cage by guards oh. who yell at and emasculate him. Just your fucking mouth, take it like a man. It's hard to just buck up when you're here the latest contestant on Wheel of Misfortune, an idea Scott Spiegel had that he couldn't believe cleared the legal <laughs> department. As if the stakes of thrill- Wheel of Misfortune. What body part is this guy gonna lose? Will it be an eye, a tongue, or even his junk? <laughs> killing Disgusting. Wolf high enough, this Vegas-based spin sees the hunting club's clients gambling on various torture porn predictions, like how quickly Mike will mention his family. Please, please listen. I have a wife. I have a fucking daughter. I have a son. They're six and four years old. Please, family. Please, please. One minute, 58 seconds. The over-under was two minutes. Congratulations to players two, five, and seven. It's a Black Mirror-esque <laughs> twist on the formula. Like, you fuckers are betting on what I'll weapon. say? This dude thinks <laughs> it'll be a drill but the killer doesn't commit to the bit. Sorry, guy. Instead, he makes a mask out of Mike and plays peekaboo with his own face. Not even John Travolta and or Nicolas Cage could save him now. <laughs> Mike's this exfoliating face... skin peel oh. and the rest of this movie's effects were designed by Robert Kurtzman, <laughs> the former K of K&B FX group. He took over the Damn. franchise's effects from the B&N, Howard Berger, and Greg Nicotero. Although he was working with a much smaller budget, oh, Kurtzman and his team cool. still got away with making a lot of wacky prosthetics. Also, we had to build these oversized sections of uh, interior of a nostril and interior mouth that we could put the camera through and shoot these POVs from the back of the throat as you know certain certain torture devices came into into their mouths like shock. Very clever. Back clever. at the hotel, the horny boys use a business card that Nikki gave Justin to find out where she lives. But that card only has her email address. It's called cyber stalking. Pretty good at it. Um, something we should oh, know, Justin? Hey, they eventually uh, break into Nikki's trailer, no. only to find that nobody's home. And the other sex worker, Kendra, busts in with a burly friend. And the guys learn Nikki's in the same boat as Mike. Nikki didn't come home last night either. The unlucky ladies weren't working for the oh, elite hunting well. club at all. They were just hired by Carter for the party. Nikki is just as much a victim as Mike. Uh, actually, probably a bit worse. Definitely, Her public definitely execution was. Definitely comes in the was. form of a sugar water spritz and a sprinkling of cockroaches. Pretty gross. Oh, God. Probably not fatal, right? 
right? Nope, never mind. It is fatal. Damn, girl, you could have oh. closed your mouth or chewed. Don't let fear be such a factor. Travis, the creep oh, from the God. opening scene, reminds us all that yes, he's a creep. He did. You're still fucking hot. Nasty little Axel. He tries to convince Nikki's friend she's alive by texting them a picture of her face, just like the hunters did with Oli in the first movie. Except this time, the bad guy goes the extra mile and uses it to lure them towards a hostel. Hmm, can't help but think they maybe should have brought Kendra's shotgun toting friend. He could have helped when people yeah, started coming the out of the mirrors and shit to capture Carter, Scott, and Kendra. Travis personally takes care of Justin, who gets one good hit in, but oh. is ultimately taken just the same. They're carted off Damn. to the battering cages, where the goons call first dibs on Justin. As he's escorted to the showroom, Carter shows his get-out-of-jail-free bloodhound stamp. It saves oh, him from trouble, fuck. but not Scott. It means members only. Carter, you dick! Turns out Carter hey, is a member of the, the Bloodhound Gang, and he's here to do it like they do on the torture porn channel. Despite being one of their best customers, Carter's still disliked by Mr. Fleming, the guy in charge here. Fleming's gone out of his way to grant Carter a special request, and the dude is still what a request? total Kip per douchebag. Come on, man, don't order Jack straight up if that's how you're gonna drink it in front of this guy. Fix your face! Carter has sold out his friends, meaning uh, okay. Justin's about to get killed by some ghost pirates. His killer is actually <laughs> nah. a Japanese cyberpunk woman, the only weirdly themed killer of the series. I guess huh. it makes sense to have something like this when the clients are more spectator than spec, as in Richard. The hunter is you know, a that actually makes sense. And just in high speed action. I mean, honestly, it kind of sucks that they're not doing it. They're just, like, betting on what it will be, saying what it could be. They aren't even really doing the killing now. They're, they're literally just watching. I think that is. They literally took a back seat puncture with a crossbow. Eventually, she works her way to the most sensitive pressure point of all, the oh, brain. No. Or oh. maybe the Oof. dick. Doesn't matter. She shoots both. them both and Justin is killed. Next up on Wheel of Misfortune is Scott, since he's not on the hunting club's client list. He's dressed up like he's going to see Goldfinger, but it's his bro Carter who expects him to die. Carter is played by former Titan of Memory, Kip Perdue, who you might know as the voice of Alan in Resident Evil 7. He's oh, great at being serious? a sniveling That's asshole, cool. even before the twist, but he elevates his performance to supreme assholder when it's revealed he's here to kill his best friend. It'll put the thrill back into killing, since murdering nobodies has grown old hat for him. And besides, then he can steal Scott's fiance. This is all about Amy? Yeah, what? This Why? This is all about Amy? Maybe you should have featured her in more than two short scenes. Though there is a yeah. line that indicates a past between her and Carter. You had your chance, freshman year. Before Carter oh, can play is. Carver, Travis keeps the action interesting and lets Scott go so they can have a boy fight. They get it <laughs> on like it's Nevada Battle Land until Scott gets the upper thing on on the ceiling and Ooh, stabs Carter yeah. to near death. Interesting two-handed technique there. Of all the details in Hostel 3's kill box, <laughs> oh. the weirdest is a giant QR code that Scott and Carter sword fight passed. It was intended to be one of many in the movie that viewers could scan for viral advertisements, but the idea was what? scrapped, and now it just generates text that says, Top left me. Scott makes his escape that, as that Victor plans his own rebellion. He's able to spring a trap on a guard. Oh, dude, he literally cut off the tattoo. I like that coming to tase him and gives the guy an electric tonsillectomy. Scott flails around for a better weapon of his own and gets medieval on some hench oh. ass and is shooted away from looting the corpse. Victor adds to the chaos by axing out the power then sets a shining example by hacking a guard to death before unfortunately oh, catching a shotgun shit. blast to the chest. I liked Victor, Damn, especially Victor? watching that opening scene in retrospect. He's actually he was a just a non-jealous dude with a hot girlfriend who was down to get drunk with an American tourist. R.I.P. bro. Realizing that things Rest have gone tits for that up, guy. Fleming has Travis dismissed the clientele. Shame. They speed away from the building in their limo and avoid getting added to the kill count. Then Fleming says to execute Order 66. Kill them all. No witnesses. To ensure this scenario, they're Ooh. setting up a bomb and sending oh, out murder crap. squads. Scott manages to save Kendra by blasting a guard before he can execute her. Turns out, he only bought her like 30 more seconds of life though, since Travis shoots her in the and, bud yep. and I guess kills her with a kick to the face. Honestly, pretty gentle way to go in this series, all things considered. Down yeah, in the parking is, garage, Fleming tries to escape death. before this pop stand blows. But Carter escalates the situation, Mikey Meyer style, and stabs the head honcho repeatedly in the front seat. Ultimately, <laughs> He uses Fleming as a Dean Adams to get over the parking spikes. Brenda Bates, eat your heart out. Although he doesn't stick around Lovely. long, Thomas Kretschmann brings his trademark menace to Fleming. From King Kong to Dario Argento to Ooh. Indiana Jones, he's worked with all the greats, often as a villain. His casting carries on Roth's tradition. So wait, he's like Alan Tudyk then. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, Alan Tudyk, always a villain. 
and of using genre legends and bit parts for these films. Back inside, Scott's giving a Midwestern eulogy for his friends. Oh, jeez. Travis interrupts him, and the two play Is It Cake with various parts of the human oh, body until damn. Scott recycles Justin's brace as a beating stick. He kills Travis with brute force, maybe even beating him to death before he bleeds out from his arm stump. <laughs> as far as hostile bad guys go, I like Chris Coy's wienery performance as Travis. It was cool how the character slipped between behaviors as the situation needed. Fleming's self-destruct sequence is nearing the end as Carter and Scott both try to escape. Carter takes a beat to be a dick one last time, causing Scott to seemingly cash out in the explosion. Dude. Now, sure, there are a lot of people who might have died. Oh, in that wait, never mind. Yeah, you're right. Like clients and guards and, oh yeah, Anka. Remember her? But there's That's no Carter, way to know dick. a definitive number. And besides, that parking garage looked pretty empty to me. All that being said, the explosion nets us a fiery goose egg for the count. Which also means Scott didn't die either, of course, despite the urn that oh. Carter and Amy cuddle in front of sometime later. She keeps up the ruse until Carter drops his guard, and then she drops the bomb on him. Problem is... He's alive! <laughs> My oh. question is, how long was she going along with Carter's story? There's an urn there. It would have had Dude, to- Dude, that was incredible! Not just through his hand, but through the table! That takes a whole lot of force! Oh. So like what? At least a week. <laughs> a badly burned Scott drags Carter to the improvised game room in their garage, where they have an entire home and garden section of misfortune waiting for him. The crazy kids landscape Carter's face with a rototiller, proving <laughs> once again that the couple that flays together stays together. I can't wait to see how they uh, top this payback. for the bachelorette party. But for now, let's spin this wheel. Spin the wheel. Get huh, to the numbers. Get to the numbers. Thank God it didn't land on a help crowdfund thanks killing four. Wait, is that actually real? Twelve people died in Hostel Part 3, fewer than the first two installments. The victims eh, included oh well. ten men and two women, giving us the bluest pie chart of the franchise. We've seen the same count and breakdown in 13 Ghosts and the combined kill count for Sunny Family Cult Seasons oh, yeah. 1 and 2. Remember those? In a runtime of 88 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 7.33 minutes. Not Look bad. Look at the golden chainsaw from Coolest Kill to Mike's facelift. I love the stringy oh. shot of his skin coming off, kind of from his POV. Dol Machete for Lamest <laughs> Kill goes yeah, to freaky. Nikki. Death by Cockroach is creepy and crawly and cool in concept. And I like that Kurtzman had to make an oversized mouth for the shot, but I'm not entirely sure how she died from it. Indigestion, maybe? I, I, I don't know. And uh, that's it. Hostel Part 3 came out in 2011. I mean, if I had to guess, because of the sugar water luring them into her body and her not being able to fight back and apparently refusing to close her damn mouth, they probably could have just started eating her from the inside out or... No, no, no. Okay, I got it. They probably went down into her throat and then into her whole lungs, probably causing them to clog up, leading to eventual suffocation. There you go, James. Maybe that's how she died. Scott Spiegel was game to make another direct-to-video installment, but the studio wasn't interested. Besides some recent rumblings oh, of a well. reboot, that's where the Hostel series checks out. And that's also the end of our previously agreed to sponsorship contracts covering AMPTP films, meaning things are about to get weird here on Dead Meat. Ooh. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count. Well, folks, that has been another episode of Fox Flicks on Dead Meat, and I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original video will be in the description below. So remember to support the individuals on Cray and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.